It's actually William Lockwood, James Chapman, Drew Ginn and Joshua Dunkley-Smith. We must stop there and go straight to the start for the lineup of the men's lightweight double skulls. And already on the far side, in lane number one, you picked up Lorenzo Bertini and Elia Luini, Zolt Herling and Thomas Varga for Hungary in two, former world champions. The world and Olympic champions, Zach Purchase and Mark Hunter in three. Storm Uru and Peter Taylor, who've impressed me here. They're in lane number four, silver and bronze medalists for the last couple of years. Stanley DeLay and Jeremy Azou, very impressive in Lucerne. They won there, represent France. And close to you, little and large, Rasmus Quist on the right, Mads Rasmussen, the men who were world champions in 2006 and 2007. Absolute quality from lane one to lane six. And you've got 12 superb athletes, and that is a great start. Everybody right off on the mark. And we saw the birthday girl winning the women's pair. Will the birthday boy, Tomasz Vaga from Hungary, win the men lightweight men's double? It's uh, They had a good start, so... Uh, the World Championship of 2005 might just pull a stunt here. Well, that would be something of a surprise, but they are two from the top of your picture and moving alongside Bertini and Luini, who for Italy have made quite a sharp start over on the far side. Then uh, wearing those yellow uh, vests of World Cup leaders, that's Zach Burgess and Mark Hunter for Great Britain, who had a big hiccup in Lucerne, have had three weeks of hard work. Then you get to New Zealand Storm Uru and Peter Taylor, and everything I've seen of them here suggests to me that they are the crew to beat on this particular day, certainly. And then the French, Delay and Azou, Rasmussen and Quist. Well, it's difficult to pick, isn't it? But it's the Kiwis now who've found their way to the front. Peter Taylor from Days Bay, Stormuru from Invercargill, mid-twenties, these boys, silver medalists last year, bronze medalists at Carapiro, and Carapiro, when they had the worst lane, the worst conditions, and they really showed just how quality, how good they are. True grit, that's what this crew is about, and uh, they're leading right now. France uh, far in, uh, in hot pursuit, and on the far side is both Italy and Hungary. And as well, Denmark, it's just Great Britain, just a bit off the pace right now. Yeah, Britain who had a superb start to the morning, but suddenly things have gone slightly south in the last 30 minutes or so. And now look at uh, Storm Uru and Peter Taylor. Really together, very sweet, getting the length, actually pulling it out, half a boat length, able to look left, able to look right to keep an eye on their rivals and the Italians now this is slightly out of character really forcing on the far side yes indeed but look at the ease of rowing by France in the second position spot right now Jeremy Azou and Stani Delaire very very impressive very easy rowing and uh, that's what that's what's going to help you that's what's going to help you in the final thousand meters of the race you can see the difference in stroke rates 36 for New Zealand 34 for France okay they can raise their stroke rates if they want to and actually pull back towards the New Zealanders. Difference only about half a boat length because this this parallax is just a bit uh, deceptive. And now the French just moving up. The British starting to realize that they've got to do something now, uh, having let quite a lot of distance go away from them in that first quarter. And you can see here that they're now trying to move up to third place, but New Zealand with three, three, just about three quarters of a length, I would say, over France. Italy on the far side, probably just third, coming through to the half distance now. Kiwis, then France, then over on the far side. Italians on the near side, though. Uh, Denmark actually going pretty steadily, Mads Rasmussen and Ras Rasmus Quist very steady rowing and very experienced obviously they were they were rowing together in 2004 they rowed together in 2008 winning finally winning that medal that olympic medal but they were and they were world champions in uh, in 2006 uh, and seven yeah exactly yeah, bronze medalists uh in the olympic games and zach purchase and mark hunter uh, with the yellow bibs for world cup leaders they had a really good semi-final but now they're not really 
showing themselves appropriately enough. I mean, they're up and down, and that's that's a problem for Great Britain. They need to improve their form and need to stick to that decent level. As you can see, the Kiwi double just opening up right now. They had a good move after the thousand meter mark. France still in second position, and it looks to be Italy. Lorenzo Bertini and uh, Elia Luini trying to move up on France for that silver medal position, but very impressive stuff by, uh, by New Zealand. And I don't think Great Britain can make up this difference in the final, well, what's it, seven, six, 700 meters. Now, this is a real problem for the two. Zach Purchase in the bow of that boat, and you can see the distances here. The Italians also, you know, really strong effort in that second quarter, but at the moment, they're struggling over on the far side there, and I can't see them closing on the Kiwis. The Kiwis look really good now. France in second place, then over on the far side, Italy, and they're being challenged by Denmark now for maybe the bronze medal position but these two boys are away they really are away and this is excellent it looks like new zealand are going to mop up not only the women's lightweight double skulls which they've just done but also take the men's division as well yeah but this is this is far more impressive i mean new zealand women's lightweight doubles they won by a, by a small margin impressive work nonetheless but this is just dominating the field. I mean, I'm sure Stormover and Peter Taylor can actually raise the rate and raise their game if they need to. And four years ago in Beijing, they weren't involved. Stormaru was taking the gold medal in the under-23 single, and Peter Taylor was part of the combination that took the under-23 medal in the double skull. So these two boys, they've really come through now, and the French are raising their game as they come towards us now, but still, surely the New Zealand advantage is too big for the French to get back, and it's Italy versus Denmark for the bronze medal you can see Denmark in the foreground far side Italy and Great Britain are really down because you can see they're actually in sixth place now so there is something seriously wrong in that boat but now the French coming on to get the gap down to about a half a length Denmark sprinting on the near side Italy trying to find a little bit more it's going to be pretty close France are closing on the Kiwis Kiwis still just edging just finding enough there it's very tight it's that tight but new zealand hold on france a second denmark a third then italy then hungary the 2005 world champions and finally great britain ouch ouch if ouch. you're a british supporter ouch that's if uh, you're a kiwi you can raise your flag raise, and wave yeah, it happily because yeah, that was that was cheer. That yeah. was very good and impressive work by uh, Jeremy Azou there in the stroke seat yeah. and Stanley Delaire in the bow seat because that was one hell of a final sprint for the line. The smallest of margins, but uh, it looked to us that it was a silver medal for them and this gold medal for these guys, Peter this, Turu. I was going to say, sorry, Michael, I was going to say, this is a pretty strong form line to the Olympic Games. There's no one really missing. I mean, you have the you have the, the the British, you have the New Zealand double. Obviously, there's still an Australian double skull somewhere out there. There's the Canadians, there's the Portuguese, and there's a couple of other crews. But the important crews are all here: Denmark, Italy, France, New Zealand, Great Britain, Hungary. All crews that were that we expect to see or expect to race for those six medal spots in London. Well, the um, great thing about all sport is when it's unpredictable. And what you saw there was a great effort by the New Zealand duo who, you know, they did deserve the victory for all the early work they did. But hang on, you were absolutely right, Michel. France, you picked them right from the beginning. They didn't make it.